In this video, I want to show you a technique to solve Olympiad inequalities. It's called the tangent line trick. It's super powerful and super elegant. And I'm going to demonstrate it with this example. So we want to prove that for positive reals A, B, and C, this inequality holds. Now, this is called Nesbitt's inequality. There are many ways to prove this. But the point of this video is to show you how to use tangent line trick. So how can we use tangent line trick to solve this problem? Hmm. Well, notice this. Just take this term as an example, okay? Notice that in this term, we have a, b, and c. Three variables. Not very fun, right? Instead, if we could write this term as a function of a alone, that would be much, much better. And similarly, if we could write this term as a function of b alone and this term as a function of c alone, then we would just have three terms, all of which are just a function of one variable. That would make it very easy to analyze each term individually. But we cannot do that right now because we don't know any relationship between a, b, and c. For instance, we don't know, we don't know what a plus b plus c must be, right? They can be anything. So there's no relationship between a, b, and c. So it seems like our idea of writing each term as a function of one variable is hopeless. Or is it? <laughs> Check this out. I claim that if we were to impose the condition a plus b plus c is equal to 3, then solving this problem with this condition is no different from solving this problem without this condition. Why is that? Well, the reason is because this inequality is homogeneous. If you did not understand what I mean by that, I mean that if we were to take each variable a, b, and c, and then we were to scale each of them by some factor f, so f a, f b, f c, where this factor f is positive, then if we were to make the substitution a with f a, b with f b, and c with f c, right, substitute that in, then it's possible to simplify this side back to the original form, right? Try it. If you're, if you're to substitute a with f a, b with f b, c with f c, then the entire inequality would just simply, the f's would cancel out, right? You would get the same expression. Now, what does that mean? Well, this would mean that if this inequality holds for some numbers a, b, and c, then it would also hold for some scaled version of a, b, and c. In particular, <laughs> this would mean that if this inequality holds for some a, b, and c summing to 3, then it would hold for any multiple of a b, a, b, and c as well. So it would also hold for values of a, b, and c that do not sum to 3. They could necessarily sum to less than 3 or more than 3 because, again, you can scale the variables as much as you want. Therefore, this condition will not change the validity of our proof at all. We can, without loss of generality, impose this condition. Okay, with this condition set up, we can finally write each of these terms as a function of just one variable. And that's because from this, we can get that b plus c is equal to 3 minus a. And with this term, we can substitute b plus c with 3 minus a. So this term becomes a over 3 minus a. And similarly, these two terms, they become b over 3 minus b and c over 3 minus c. And we still want to prove that the sum is greater or equal to 3 over 2. Now, <laughs> much better, right? We can just analyze each individual term because they are just a function of one variable. So let's just take this a over 3 minus a. Okay, firstly, can you spot the equality condition? In other words, can you spot what a, b, and c can be such that this will be equal to 3 over 2? Well, you will notice that a equals to b is equal to c is equal to 1 is an equality condition. It certainly is if you were to just plug them in and verify yourself. Well, this is where the idea of using a tangent line comes in. I want you to consider the graph of y is equal to x over 3 minus x. So basically, each of these terms, but I replace the variables with x. Notice that this graph on the xy plane, right? This graph 
looks something like this. It looks like this for when x is smaller than 3. And note that it's only useful to consider this portion because a, b, and c, they sum to 3. So they have to be smaller or equal to 3. So the only useful part is this portion. And we know that we have an equality case at x is equal to 1. Now, consider this. Take the, take the point on the graph where x is equal to 1. Okay? If we were to draw, if we were to draw a tangent line, a tangent line to that graph at x is equal to 1, then notice what this is showing us. It's showing us that the value of this rational function is always going to be greater or equal to the value of this line, right? Because the y-coordinate is always above or the same as the line, right? So we have basically produced a line whose output value is always going to be smaller or equal to our desired function. Now, why, why is this so useful? You will see. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it too much because honestly right now it's kind of hard to explain, but it's best to just let this unfold in front of your eyes. Okay, first things first. What is this line? What is its equation? Well, that's not very hard to find. It's tangent, so we can use derivatives. <laughs> so firstly, its slope, we have to differentiate this function We'll use the quotient rule, which states that if f over g is being differentiated, then this is equal to f prime times g, and then minus g prime times f over g squared. And in this case, we'll take the top to be f, bottom to be g. So this derivative becomes, this will become 3 minus x, and then minus uh, negative 1 times x, and then over g squared, that is 3 minus x all squared. Now, we want to find the slope at x is equal to 1, so we can just plug in x to be 1 for this one. This will become 2 and then plus 1 over 2 squared, and this becomes 3 over 4. So the slope is just 3 over 4. And furthermore, we know that this line passes through the point 1. Uh, okay, this function at x is equal to 1, that's 1 half. So it passes through this point. So therefore, the slope and the point, we get the equation. It is equal to, uh, the equation is y minus 1 half is equal to 3 over 4 times x and then minus 1. And that's its equation. We can, of course, rearrange this. Okay, so I've rearranged the equation. Now, what can we do with this? Well, remember, from this graph, it looks like that the tangent line always lies below this rational function. So we can claim that this rational function will always be greater or equal to this line. So we can claim, we can claim that this function x over 3 minus x will always be greater or equal to this line, which is 3 over 4x minus 1 over 4. And with this claim, we can finally deliver the final bit of computation to prove, to prove our inequality. Now, I'm going to erase this because it's going to take up some space. <laughs> so with this claim, we can say that this expression is greater or equal to 3 over 4a minus 1 over 4, right? Because this will be always greater or equal to this. And similarly, and similarly, for this term, it's going to be greater or equal to 3 over 4b minus 1 over 4. And for this term, it's greater or equal to 3 over 4c minus 1 over 4. And we can simplify this. This becomes, this becomes 3 over 4a plus b plus c, and then minus 3 over 4. And notice that a plus b plus c, that is equal to 3. So this over here just becomes 3. And that is why using a linear function was so powerful, because we already know the sum of a plus b plus c when they are in a linear sum. So that's why this tangent line worked out very nicely. Now, what is this value? Well, if you were to evaluate this, you would see that this, that this simplifies nicely to 3 over 2 
which is exactly what we wanted to prove. We proved that this thing is greater or equal to this, which is equal to 3 over 2. So this is always greater or equal to 3 over 2. And that is our proof. We are done. No, we are not done. <laughs> now, the part that leaves our proof incomplete is this claim. We have not proven this claim yet. We got this claim based off of visual intuition. Visual intuition that this tangent line is, well, tangent, so it looks like it lies below the graph. But remember, derivatives find locally tangent lines, not necessarily globally tangent. So if I had a graph that looked like this, right, that looked like this, then if I find a tangent line at this point, then, well, okay, for a portion of the graph, it might lie below the graph, right? But over here, it cuts the graph at another point, so it's not always going to lie below the graph. So even though this gave us visual intuition, we need to algebraically prove that this inequality truly holds for all values of x, or at least for all values of x smaller than 3, which are also positive. So how can we prove this? Well, it's actually not very hard. You can multiply both sides by 3 minus x because 3 minus x is positive, and then simplify. You eventually get 3x squared and then minus 6x plus 3 is greater or equal to 0, and you can factor out 3, that becomes 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 1, and as you can see, this just factors into x minus 1 squared. So this is, this is equivalent to 3 times x minus 1 squared is greater or equal to 0, clearly true because x minus 1 squared, it's going to be positive or non-negative, so it's going to be, this inequality is true, so this is true, we have finally completed our proof. So there you have it, that's tangent line trick, another technique for solving inequalities, especially at the Olympiad level. Now, as a brief summary, the idea was to first write each term as a function of one variable, and this is usually done by rearranging some sort of condition. If no initial condition is given, then if the, if the inequality is homogeneous, you can impose a condition. Okay, now that you have your desired form, you can, you can basically analyze each individual term. You can analyze the graph of the function and its tangent line using derivatives. And then from the graph, you can claim whether the function lies above or below the tangent line. In this case, we claim that it lies below. And then from this claim, you can just convert each of these terms to a linear function, and then that helps rhythmize calculations and eventually prove your inequality. But then you have to remember to prove your claim with algebra. Sure, derivatives get to a tangent line, but it's locally tangent, not necessarily globally tangent. So you need to prove this inequality with algebra. And that is how you complete the proof with tangent line, with tangent line trick. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you learned something new from it. If you did, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye.